My hair and beard will keep going away. My backgrounds will keep changing. But if there's one thing that won't change, it's Chainsaw Man's animation quality. Tatsu Yoshihara's animation is some of the most satisfying things to watch. I'm not even kidding when I say that I could probably jerk off to his animation. Watching his animation is like tasting honey, especially noticeable by his Jujutsu Kaisen cuts. Like they are just so satisfying to watch. He's also an incredible director. He single-handedly made the highlights of almost all the Black Clover sequences in the early episodes up to like episode 100, I think, is when he was the director. But yeah, there's a little bit of Sakuga lore associated to that. So Yoshihara was a director of Black Clover. And when he saw episode 65 of Boruto, he was really impressed like everyone else. But he was also a little bit jealous because Studio Parrot was supplying Boruto with all the resources and all of the in-house animators that was required to make that episode what it was. And it was a masterpiece. But Black Clover was not getting anything. It was not getting any production help. The Black Clover show did not have an animation producer. The animation producer is the person in charge of contacting a bunch of animators, making sure that there's enough talent available in the pool so that their show looks really good. And the position of animation producer is really, really significant. It's so difficult and hard to manage that usually animation producers have production assistants. It's also the reason why Cloverworks can function so well and dish out such productions of very high quality because of the presence of animation producers like Fukushima and Amehara. And Black Clover just did not have that. So literally every single good episode, all the animators, they came in, not via the animation producer, not via the production assistant, it came in via Yoshihara's connections. And with all of these connections, Yoshihara gave a massive middle finger to Parrot and made Black Clover episode 63, which I can't call it a masterpiece of animation because it really isn't. It's very rough around the edges. While there is a lot of high quality animation, the other teams, like the compositing and the art direction, cannot keep up, obviously, because Black Clover has awful production values put into it. So what happens when a director, who is referred to as the king of webgen animators, who pretty much can act as an animation producer because of the influence of his name. What if that guy is given free reign in terms of production values? So the bulk of this episode was animated by Utapon inspired animators and then just another couple of scenes by veteran animators. Yoshihara was not credited for key animation in this episode, but Yoshihara is known for doing a couple of key animations uncredited for his own episodes, like he did for Black Clover. And you can clearly see that in some sequences. It's pretty obvious that Yoshihara's animation has brushed off of this sequence. Another thing to note about this episode is that the action sequence, the first half of this episode, has almost no CGI. And I'm not talking just about the foreground, I'm also talking about the backgrounds. The backgrounds are almost always 100% hand-drawn. And I'm not saying that it's just a still background that's being dragged around. No, this is fully hand-drawn animation, which is of course something that's expected out of Utapon inspired animators. Let's get into the breakdown itself now. So there are a couple of sequences in this episode done by Benjamin Four. This is the first one, and I really like this focus shift that they're doing here. They're, re they're very good at emulating the presence of an actual camera. The music here is pretty mellow, which does not go with the sequence very well, but that's done on purpose, of course. Here's just a pretty cool sequence with digital animation that I don't think there's anything that's hand-drawn here, except for the, like, the grass, which is part of the art direction. And this is, I think, the best use of digital animation. This, again, is a continuation of Benjamin Forrest's sequence, and um, this is actually pretty cool. Like you might think there's no animation here because it's just the sequence of Bad Devil holding Miaoi, but there is animation here. There's this extra bit of animation with the way the light is come falling on pretty much everything into the sequence, right? So Benjamin had to draw this light bubble forming inside the bat's eye. Benjamin also had to animate this complex shading on the Bad Devil's extremely complicated looking face and also the shading that falls on Miaoi. Chainsaw Man is so well animated that even the still frames in the show are animated. The shine on Bad Devil's eye, the reflection of power, and then the focus that shift on Miyawi. Fantastic storyboarding. Expected of Yoshihara. He's so good. I also like the circle on Miyawi's head. It's, it looks nice. This is also still animated by um, Benjamin Four, and this is just a masterclass of incredible art direction. 
Uh, this is just fantastic art direction. Look at this cloud. You can clearly tell that this cloud is in front of these clouds. The clouds are multi-layered and multi-layered clouds just make the sky look so good. It's so good to see that Benjamin Forrest animation enhanced by art direction and compositing because when he worked for Attack on Titan in the final season, his beautiful works were just completely fucked in the ass by the horrible compositing. Here, there's absolutely none of that. This is a really cool run cycle. And there's also fully background animated, right? Yeah, those poles, I think those are 2D poles. Yes, uh, the poles have smears and such. I don't, like if the it was CGI here, they could just use the CGI model here as well. But since this is 2D, I'm inclined to assume that the previous one was also 2D. And yeah, the sun rays reflecting in just makes the scene look so natural, but it doesn't look like real life either. This is made to look filmic. Like film does not always have to look realistic, right? Like usually films don't look realistic sometimes. It applies filters to make it look more unique or look different depending upon what kind of scene they're showing. And that's what they're doing here. It's not like Chainsaw Man is trying to look realistic. Chainsaw Man is trying to look filmic. Another really cool shot, the beautiful emphasis on eye detail as we've always had. I mean, this is nothing special compared to what we got in the Tanaka episode. And then this sequence, wow, that's, that's just so fucking painful. I have broken my arm and my wrist, but I'd rather break my arm and wrist again than go through that. And once her foot gets lodged, the shift to first person is really good. The tumbling animation, just extremely unique, fantastic character acting. Then this blood sequence, also really sick. It's amazing. Also, I love the writing in this sequence. What power says, one life is worth as less as any other life. That's the first time I've ever heard that sentence. Usually you say one life is just as important as any other life, but with the way Paris lived, she just kills everything in sight. Um, technically the same thing that she's saying, she's saying that all life is equal. It has the opposite literal meaning while having the same technical meaning. And I, I just enjoy stuff like that. This is very good writing. And also that blood can be warm and it can feel good. It's nice. It's nice to see stuff like this. Again, just fantastic storyboarding. This just looks, it looks so good. Again, with the first person shot of eye opening, they have eyelashes. <laughs> Why do they do that? I don't know. Again, um, someone pointed out in the previous comment section, um, previous videos comments that I keep saying, why are they doing that? Or why do they need to do that? But I have to, because very few people are going to notice stuff like this. I mean, I do, but I'm sure there are stuff that I miss as well. But just in the off chance that someone is looking, they're just doing this. And they're not even just that. They're doing this is because they want to. But people say that uh, Chainsaw Man's anime adaptation is like offensive to the fans of the manga because they're not adapting the manga properly. This is stuff that's real. I'm not making this shit up. I mean, you go to Twitter, you see this all the time. Them saying that this is offensive to Chainsaw Man fans is fucking stupid. It's because every single person who's involved in creating the show, they are the biggest fans of the Chainsaw Man manga. They are such big fans of the source material that they're literally making an anime adaptation of it. So like, if you want to complain, just don't say that this is disrespectful to the fans or anything because no, uh, the guys making this, they are bigger fans than you are, which is why they're making sequences with such intricate attention to detail. It's not just because they want to make something good for the viewer's experience. It's because they want to give full attention and their maximum effort into making something that they love. And yeah, it's, it's, it's nice to see the bat like this. Plenty of guts. And yeah, the shot is also amazing. I love it. Denji's like, mm, yeah, I still want them titties, which is the reason I did this, right? I love like another like little attention to detail. Denji's pointing as the tits and as his finger moves in, you also see like the shadow of his finger on the boobs, which is just, I mean, of course they do that, right? Again, brilliant art direction. I think I also mentioned this while I was talking about uh, the trailer, but yeah, I have to say that again. This is fantastic art direction. And of course the crows, the cir they're circling around this gig ginormous dead body. And yeah, this is the amount, base amount of guts that the uh, bad devil has. And it checks out like human beings already have pretty long intestines, right? Like, um, actually, I think it's about two meters long. Let me check. Holy fuck. The small intestine is 6.7 meters long and the large intestine is 1.5 meters long. So it's ex pretty much expected that something that's this big, the bad devil that is, will have this much intestines and it's not just the intestines there's other stuff here too like what the hell is this looks like an appendix 
Maybe, I don't know. It's just gore. I love gore, so it's good. Beautiful cat animation. Cat animation's always been so good. And Miyawi just doesn't give a fuck. That's just, obviously, it's a cat. Cats don't give a fuck about what's happening. But this has to be like the most chill cat in existence. Again, notice this. I'm sure, I'm sure none of you noticed this, but it's so cool. Look at the crows. We already saw them circling around. And look at them. They're all flying away in different directions. Why? Because there's a threat now around. And what is that threat? The threat is a leech devil that you'll get to see before later. And they're showing that so well, that a threat is approaching. They're showing that so well using the art direction, just the crows that were closing in on the bad devil to feast on its body, they're now flying away. Why? Because there's a threat now. Just so, so incredibly well thought out. I, I love the show so much, man. I keep saying it because it's true. I can't, I need to express it more because I, I can't contain my love for the show. Some extremely exaggerated character acting here. When I saw this first, I immediately knew it. It was Toshiki Sato. Sato is just amazing. Sato is probably the most versatile animator in existence. And yeah, I need to make an animator spotlight of him. But if I make one now, my subscribers will kill me because I have to make the Nozumabe animator spotlight first. But about Sato, I should say that he's easily top five animators in Japan and maybe in the world. And yeah, I'm not saying that lightly. He really is one of the greatest animators of our generation. And again, the best thing about him is just how versatile he is. Like he is a Canada style animator and he usually animates in Canada style, but in productions that have realistic character designs, like for example, Tucked of Destiny, here he's animating in fluid Tanaka style realism. And even in his character acting, he does character acting in Canada style and he can also do character acting in that fluid realistic style. Here, I think he's perfectly meeting it halfway between his exaggerated Canada style animations and like a fluid realistic kind of animation. But yeah, it's definitely more exaggerated than it is realistic because it's a comedic sequence, right? It's not um, like a serious sequence, which is where he usually does realistic kind of animation. Like just look at Mob Psycho, for example, again, if it's goofy Reagan character acting, he'll animate in Canada style. If it's a heartfelt one-to-one -one sequence, he'll animate in that realistic style. I love the usage of smears here. These almost look like Imai inspired smears. And yeah, the way the perspective shifts is so cool. Like it starts with his face and now like 80% of the screen is just his body and his bicep. And just look at the bicep vein here because he's just so pumped up that you can just see his biceps sticking out. There's blood over there conveyed by the animation. And then perspective shifts again, closing in on his face and then zooms out so much perspective shifting here and it's not just the animation that's amazing again the art direction the shifts look at how the backgrounds are shifting according to the foreground animation i have no clue what is happening here if anyone has any idea please tell me it just looks like denji's arm just fucking explodes out of nowhere first i thought it was powers blood bending but it's no it's actually the leech devil that did that so i have no clue how the leech devil is doing this i refer to the manga and it's the same thing there denji's arm just pops off Again, fantastic effects animation, but mixed in with some uh, digital effects. A little bit distracting here, but then again, because of the presence of uh, the 2D blood, it doesn't look too bad. But I do feel like digital blood here is kind of unnecessary because there's already so much of the 2D blood that I don't think that these digital blood particles like these, I don't think those are necessary at all. There are sequences here, like I've, I'll give two other examples, one where the digital blood enhances the sequence and another where the digital blood detracts from the sequence. The shot here, it's entirely animated in once because Kakani was used here. Kakani is an interpolation software specifically made for animators. And that part, the specifically for animators part is very important because interpolation is shit. But with Kakani, the animators can decide how you want the shot to be interpolated, how you want to add those individual frames. And it's something that Ufotable uses extensively. It's also something that um, David Productions used. They use like the disadvantage of interpolation ruining animation techniques in Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, which was really cool to see. But they also used Kakani in like the way it's meant to be used in Fire Force, like this sequence. And again, I love how the sequence is shot. Like, I actually love it. I love what Yoshihara is doing here. And he's just perfectly conveying how chaotic and ridiculous Chainsaw Man is. Like I watched the reactions of that people had to this episode and almost all of them 
thought that this, whatever this tentacle is coming, is grabbing Meowy. And they were all worried for Meowy. They were all worried for the cat, but the main character just had his arm blown off. Including me. I thought that it was grabbing the cat here as well. And that's just how ridiculous Chainsaw Man is. Like, in what other show would you be like, Oh, the main character had his arm blown off. I hope that the thing that blew off the main character's arm won't hurt the cat. Like, that's a brand new sentence, and that's only applicable for Chainsaw Man. Again, the way this thing is animated is fucking disgusting in, in the perfect way. Uh, a zoomed out view, you don't get much of these striations in its body. It does not look very springy. But when zoomed in, you see all of that beautiful line work. Beautiful. I mean, like, I'm talking about the animation, not the devil itself. Because this has to be, like, the most disgusting thing I've ever seen in anime. Or any medium ever. And I have seen um, Mikasa x Ani Futanari Hentai. So I'm used to disgusting shit. Honestly, Mikasa x Ani Futanari Hentai, it's not even disgusting. I don't know why that used as an example. Let me think of something else. Okay, I have seen a gender-bent version of Todoroki giving birth. But... Yeah, I'd say that is still more disgusting than this, but it's close. This is still very, very creepy. And I love the hand movement here. It almost feels like this portion where uh, the devil is holding Denji's hand is like a joint. It's not just that his hand is doing this as it's going down. His hand is doing this because it's all got the individual joints that is not under Denji's control anymore. And you can see what I'm talking about when I go through it frame by frame. You can see how the hand is moving. You can see how the fingers are moving as well. And now because the devil is pulling down the hand, there's a little bit of inertia, which is why the hand is bending backwards. But now that it's down, there's gravity, so it will move forwards again, which you can see. And there it is. It falls forwards. And then it just wobbles at the bottom there. Just absolutely incredible animation by Toshiki Sato. Expected out of him. I really want to see more uh, animation styles being used here. Like we see Norio school animation, we see Utapon school animation, but we haven't seen Canada school animation yet. And there are plenty of amazing Canada school animators like Takeshi Manemi, there is Suit, there is Toshiki Sato. And I love this. This is amazing work by Sato. Again, just an exceptional amount of detail on this devil. I mean, just look at this. They, they're animating the peristaltic movement of Denji's hand through the devil's throat. They're animating every individual ring of the muscle. Again, I, I love the short composition here. Really Utapon-esque camera movement, by the way. Like, like, if there's any portion of the screen that has movement in it, that's where the camera will move. That's how Utapon does his camera work. You will see that with um, Yen Yen's cut as well. I'll break that down. Really Utapon like movement. And I love the drawings used here as the chainsaw pops out of Denji's head. I love his expressions. His tongue comes out here and the way his tongue's moving. Uh, I like that. It looks really nice. This head motion again. Very Utapon esque camera work. Pretty sle sleek shot here again. Again, uh, the camera following the movement. Again, a very sick shot. I mean, look at the framing here through the devil's legs. He looks more like Pochita here than he does like Chainsaw Man. There's a little bit of the chainsaw popping out. Also, I think the leech devil is much bigger here than it was in the manga. Again, some really weighty motions here. Fantastic sense of scale here. So well done. A devil that does not have eyes and only has lips. So you have one thing to work with here to show expressions. And that's the lips. That's all you have. And they're still conveying all the emotions of the leech devil through that one visible object. Again, this close-up is just so good. I mean, it's disgusting, which is why, which is what it's trying to be, which is why it's good. Now we get to Yen Yen. This is easily Yen Yen's best work ever. And every time Yen Yen animates, it brings a tear to my eye. Yen Yen is a Utopon style animator. I've, saw, I've seen him grow through the years. I've been following him since 2015. He worked in um, Black Clover. I think that was his first work, which put him in the map. He became like a pretty well-known name after his work in Tucked Op Destiny. When Tucked Op released, it had a lot of hype surrounding it because it's Madhouse X Mappa. And thankfully, Yen animated in episode 3 where the hype was up there. And he animated the best sequences of episode 3. He perfectly blends old school Nakamura, the tight choreography sequences, with new Nakamura's bombastic sequences. First, he shows like there's something concentrating in the tentacle. And then that tentacle just shoots forward. Boom. And when it shoots forward, it's thin. So all that concentrated, whatever it was, muscles you could say, it's just shooting forward. And it's not just like Denji's dodging it and then just moving forward. He's just this... Cool little turning scene. 
and then runs around the devil. Beautiful background animation with the devil being in the background here. Again, so much of this reminds me of Levi vs. Beast Titan. Um, big but I mean that's just because Leva vs Beast Titan was one of the most iconic pieces of anime, right? Boom! So awesome. Look at how distorted the tentacle is. I'm just gonna call it tentacles by the way. I don't I hope that's fine. And then Denji steps on a piece of the rubble as the rubble explodes and some really cool spiky Utapon inspired smears. And the way he tumbles in the air just looks so natural. And then the tentacle grabs him again. And again, the, to emphasize that Denji is being grabbed tightly here. Look at that. Look at those, that smeared shot there. Just contracting in. And then the knot gets way tighter after that smear. Like here, the knot looks pretty loose. And then it contracts. Look at how the pulse, look at the pulse motion, right? The shock of that contraction just moves through the tentacle. It's so well done. Going very out of model here. Again, fantastically mixed with the art direction here, like these, this is not, the background is not animated by Yen. But here, once he hits it, all that debris is animated by Yen. So good coordination between the art directors and um, the animator, just make the scene look as harmonious as possible. Again, I love the shot so much. It's so well choreographed. And the reason I say that I like this more than Watanabe's cut is because I like weighty animation more than Watanabe's um, really floaty kind of animation. And Yen's Emphasis on weight is really well done here. And yeah, I also think this sequence in particular was inspired by Henichi Fujiwasa's One Punch Man sequence in episode 1. And again, this is what I was talking about, Yutapon as camera movement. You see here, like Denji is part of the frame. He's the main component of the sequence, of the shot. But that's not where the movement is happening. The movement is happening as the rocks are hitting the signpost. And so the camera shifts to the signpost. And you can clearly tell what's being thrown to. Like first there's a rock, a rock that bounces into the stop sign and that gets blown away. And then another fucking sign thrown at the sign. So maybe Dio is here as well. And beautiful smoke animation. I love the way the environment plays a, a role in the fights. I always love when environment play a role in fights, which is something that's kind of missing from Demon Slayer fights, which is why I say that the Demon Slayer fights are not all that well written. Like Rengoku versus Akaza could have looked so much better if like they were blown inside the train and they fought inside the train or something like that. In fact, there's a YouTube channel that does cat animations in 3D. Fucking fantastic channel, you should check it out. Like this is one of the best animation channels on YouTube and their version of Rengoku's Akaza had better utilization of the environment than the actual version. And I love this run cycle, so good. He's The way he's taking long strides, I absolutely love it. And it mixes so well with the background as well. Again, there's so much movement here. So this cut is so fully animated. There's stuff happening in the foreground, like um, the tentacle that hit Denji, I mean, attack Denji, that's finally coming up, preparing for another attack. While the tentacles in the bag, they're just grabbing a pole. And Denji notices that and boom. Again, some really good smoke animation. And I love how Denji dissipates into that smoke. That's the end of Yin Yin's cut. So cool. I love it. And from one Utapon inspired animator, it's just the next year Depon Inspired Animator. This is by Michael Sung, who's another foreign animator. I broke down his sequence uh, in My Hero Academia's Movie 3. And again, his style is so similar to Nakamura's style that even the people making the show, they realize that. There's no cut in between Utapon's cut ending and Michael Sung's cut beginning. And this shot is as Nakamura as a shot gets. At the start here, it's over here. And then you skip frames and slowly moving forwards. And now it's, that's it. It's almost very close to the front of the screen now. Even though it's moving so slowly, the way you see it, you can tell, right? Even if you don't understand animation techniques at all, you're able to tell that this tentacle is moving very fast. Not because of the foreground movement, but because of the background movement. This wind animation that's whooshing on the tentacle and the background animation with again, spiky Utapon style smears again. And the tentacle looks like it's moving fast because of the way the background is moving fast. It's it's a relative momentum. The tentacle is moving very fast relative to the background because the background is moving very fast backwards, which means the tentacle must be moving very fast forwards. Again, a technique that was highly popularized by Yutaka Nakamura. Again, here the character looks like he's moving very, very fast, even though he's not moving all that fast across the screen. The wind animation is also done. The background is also very well animated and the shadows of all the structures, because there are buildings there, all of those structures, you can't see those buildings, but their shadows are still animated 
on the background as part of the background animation with just very fantastic work by uh, Michael Sung here. This was a little bit confusing first because I thought uh, the hit it followed through. I thought this is the tentacle that hit Denji and that's following through. But no, that's not the tentacle that's hitting Denji. This is the tentacle that's hitting Denji. And once I actually noticed what was happening in this cut, I realized that because as you can see here, it's being held there and a lot of debris is flying from that portion of the screen. And again, this is really cool. Love the smoke dissipation here. Fantastic animation. And now we get to Takashi Tomioka's cut. And I am so happy to see Takashi Tomioka as part of Chainsaw Man's production. He definitely got in here through the connection that he had in Jujutsu Kaisen Zero. And um, there, was, there was a comment I remember in the video that I just released <laughs> saying that are there any veteran animators in Chainsaw Man? And yes, there are obviously a lot of veteran animators. But I mean, this is Takashi Tomioka. And very few people can out-veteran Takashi Tomioka when it comes to the status of a veteran animator. This guy was animating alongside Utapon back in Cowboy Bebop. He's been around for a long time. So I'm just really, really glad to see him work on Chainsaw Man. I hope he works more because this cut is just really good. I love the sense of weight here. There's also a bit of background animation here, just an extra bit of movement with the pole, which is fully background animated. And look at how Denji is jumping here, right? The amount of distance he jumps, it does not fit the amount that he's bending his legs. He should ideally be bending his legs even more and not just bending his legs, he also should be bending his body. But the reason it's done this way is to make it look like the tentacle, it's squishy and it's bouncy. So Denji does not need to bend his legs much. He does not need to apply a lot of force. So since the devil's tentacle is very squishy, um, it will transfer all that force that Denji is applying without absorbing any of it. And when you watch that in animation, you can see that it's getting squished and it's throwing Denji off like it wants to throw. It's like a trampoline. And then again, so much weight with that punch. Wow, that's like the opposite of Keichiro Watanabe style. <laughs> Even in Jujutsu Kaisen Zero, his animation was really slow with a very, very heavy emphasis on weight. And now we get to see that in Chainsaw Man. Again, really well storyboarded cut. Uh, the first thing that emphasizes the weight of Denji's punch is the shift in Denji's pose. Look at this pose. It's pretty closed. And now after the punch, it gets fully opened. The pose is going from this to this. And another thing that's emphasizing the weight, of course, is how much the head is moving here to all the way to the almost the edge of the screen. And the shock is really well emphasized again with the droplets of saliva that's just exploding in all directions. Denji also gets hit and boom, again, really good emphasis on weight here. This shot connects him and then there's a lot of buildup and then released. Love this animation here again as he hits the intestines on the ground. This is bad devil's intestines. So the blood that pops up is that pinkish color blood that the bad devil had. I, again, I love this bit of character acting. It looks like the motion of the head and the arm has a lot of weight. Now it switches to Yuki Yamashita's animation. Yuki Yamashita is a true web webgener. He uses a lot of CGI for his layouts and background animation. That is self-made CGI background status. He made one of the best sequences in Fire Force. The background animation with Charon just pushes Shinra forwards, just looks so fucking gorgeous. But again, that's not true background animation. That is a self-made background in Blender. I don't know exactly how it's doing. How he's doing it. But if I had to assume how he's doing it, I think first he mapped out the background, fully mapped it out using Blender 3D. And then he animated by hand on top of it because this looks too much like 2D background animation to just be a Blender background. And even here for this shot, this again is a pretty complex in terms of layout, like the sense of perspective here is pretty complex. So he used a 3D layout for it and then animated on top of it to just completely remove the idea that the 3D layout was there in the first place. But that's it. According to Sakuraboru, this is the only thing that was animated by Yuki Yamashita and that's it. Just three small cuts. And again, some <laughs> unnecessarily ridiculous character acting here. Like look at, the, look at what the devil is doing, right? It does this and it does not really have hands to do this, but it's conveyed that it's doing that using the tentacles. And th that's, they're doing complex character acting sequences with this. I, I don't know, I don't even know what to say about that. And again, look at that. It's laughing at Denji. So it's, so it's doing this. The character acting is done in a way to make it look feminine, which it's, it's absolutely incredible. I need to strengthen my verbiage, especially for 
giving praises because I'm going to need more than just incredible, amazing, extraordinary when I'm talking about Chainsaw Man. And again, when Denji's thinking about all the people who, all of the haters who hated on his dream, it's shown in first person view. This is Denji's POV when he was holding power. And again, you see Aki. This is his POV again when the Aki was holding his head. So always, always done in first person when someone is recalling something. I love when that's done. The sequences from here are animated by Naoki Miyajima. I didn't know about this animator until this scene and then I looked him up and wow, he's actually animated a lot of really good sequences in the past. And this sequence is probably his best work ever. I love how he plays with uh, timing and I also love how he plays with perspectives. So first of all, we get to see this tentacle brushing on Denji's arm and Denji just pushes it away, runs forward. The scene flow is really good here. It almost looks like there isn't even a cut here. Like it almost looks like Denji's just walking, running around the camera and the camera is rotating around him, which it isn't. There's a cut here, but the way it's storyboarded makes it look like there's no cut. And then uh, the tentacle comes up, hits him. And again, I thought this would cut to Denji being thrown away, but it just kept continuing. Denji grabbed onto it, completely shifts the perspective now. A lot of it, the bottom portion, a lot of it is um, the tentacle and the tentacle is small towards the end. Denji is really tiny now, but then Denji falls forward and now look at him. He's covering almost the entirety of the screen. He even goes past the camera. And again, perspective shifts, pull the chainsaw, really good drawings here. Wow, this is a really cool drawing. I like how just individual drawings in animation, just they are so good. Like if I had to draw this one drawing, it, it would probably take me a whole day. And the fact that this is just one drawing part of a hundred other drawings or made more, definitely more than that is amazing to me. So again, a shift in perspective, look at how tiny the devil is and compared to the arm or the tentacle and look at how big Denji is. And then Denji falls forward, right? Yeah, Denji falls forward, Denji's tiny again, but then the camera follows him very fast. Camera catches up to him. He's big again, constant shifts in perspective. And it's not just Denji that is shifting in perspective here again. It's not that Jin, Denji being small and becoming big, the zooming in and out is kept consistent while also zooming in on the leech table. It reminds me of Arifumi Imai sequence in Shingeki no Kyojin season two, I think. All the scouts are just going around the colossal titan's arms. Yeah, this shot in particular looks so similar to that sequence in Attack on Titan, but there's even more perspective shifts here. I'm sure that this is again inspired by Arifumi Imai. If you want to reference human versus titan combat, of course you would reference Arifumi Imai's animation. And the slice again, this is where he plays with the speed very well. Denji slices the throat and then now it's slow motion, right? Except the blood. Even the blood is slow motion, but the blood particles, they're moving very fast. That makes no sense, but it's nice because it's satisfying. And then Denji gets thrown away really fast. The slow motion ends for Denji, but the devil is still in slow motion. And then the devil starts moving really fast. And with the devil, the background also starts moving very chaotically. So the slow motion ends sequentially. First, everything is slow motion except the blood particles that are just whooshing past the screen, as you can see here. Then slow motion ends for Denji as he gets thrown across the screen. And then slow motion ends for the devil. So this makes no sense from a realistic point of view, but it is satisfying animation and animation satisfaction should always have priority over realism. And again, some really cool character acting again by Miyajima. Um, again, the devil, fucking disgusting. Look how it looks. This might even be drawn by Keisuro Watanabe. I'm not sure. Keisuro Watanabe is a god at animating and drawing, making drawings of really high detail. And since their very next cut is Watanabe, this could be drawn by Watanabe. I wouldn't be surprised at all. And yeah, this cut starting from here, it is Watanabe. People thought that starting from here, it was Watanabe because of the speed and the smears. But this is also by Watanabe. Again, you can tell by the smears. Uh, where is it? There's only one really good cut of that. Yeah, here it is. Here it is. That's clearly Nori Matsumoto-esque uh, squashing and stretching kind of smears. That is like super Watanabe style smears. And here, Denji is animated in threes, fives, fours, fours again. So there, are, there's a very few um, drawing count um, with how Denji is moving, but that is done to emphasize weight. And I, I know Watanabe is not one who emphasizes weight a lot, but here in this particular character acting sequences, that's what he's doing. He's usually speed over weight. But just for this one cut, 
it's weight over speed for him and i really enjoy this character acting segment again this is not bad animation this is just well-timed animation there's a big difference between bad animation and well-timed animation this is the best piece of character acting in the show so far that is so good because um this show i mean it has the best character acting of any show ever right even rivals kyoani's um slice of life shows which where the character acting is center this does not center around character acting this is an action show but still has some of the best character acting if not the best character acting we have ever seen in anime and even among all of that case is character acting is the best i've seen in the show so far uh, this show does not have a lot of stylized character acting with action animation you do see it Tanaka's animation style in the previous episode was completely different from the animation style here, with the character designs in particular. And Watarabe's style is nothing like any of those styles. So there is creative freedom when it comes to actual animation, and you can clearly see it. But there is a creative freedom within that territory of um, realism that Chainsaw Man allows. But for character acting, it's always been like the same type of character acting. That's why it's very hard to distinguish which animator did which cut for the character acting segments because all animators are doing that hyper-realistic type of character acting. But in this episode, we get two instances of stylized character acting, first with Hoshi Kisato and now with Watanabe, and I love both of them, but this is just special. This just embodies Denji so well. First of all, I love these two motions. I love this and this. He's just releasing all the energy that he has, and it's just so good. And then again, some really good drawings the, where he sticks his tongue out and like there's a drop of saliva hanging off from the uh, tip of the tongue. And then as he moves the tongue on the opposite side, the saliva turns into droplets because of the inertia flies away. This might be my single favorite cut in the show so far. And the entire portion is really good. But towards the end, the last cut of that Watanabe does for this sequence is the one that I don't like. And the way Watanabe is animating this devil is also completely different compared to all of the others. Like, look at this, right? It's so fucking wiggly. Like, all this time, the uh, leech devil was being animated like a sausage. Now, um, Watanabe is animating it like a plastic cover flying in the wind. There's a complete lack of the sense of weight here. Like, the way it's moving, it's almost like he's moving every muscle independently. And honestly, I like this style. Like the every muscle moving independently style over the weighty style of the character acting for the devil, only the devil. Everything else, I prefer the weighty style. But I, I really love how Watanabe is doing this. And the fact that he can do this, right? This whole show, the entire idea of the show is to have like a consistent visual identity. But Watanabe is so well respected that when he animates, he has full creative freedom. He can do whatever the fuck he wants. Even in a semi-restricted project like Chainsaw Man, where everybody is trying to follow Ryu Nakayama's vision, but... Watanabe just doesn't give a shit. He just does whatever he wants to do. Only in the anime industry would something like that work, right? Like the anime industry is all about creative freedom for the animators. Again, with the way he gets into the ready pose, awesome animation. And then he starts running. This is definitely de inspired from Devilman Crybaby. Like this is the Devilman run that Devilman Crybaby was so memed on about. Some awesome background animation here. And it does not mix very well. It's a bit floaty. But that makes sense because he's running on intestines. Intestines are supposed to be slippery. Another piece of character acting. And this is what I was talking about. Look how off model this thing is. Completely going against everything that other animators have done for this uh, devil model so far. And again, every single muscle, even the nipples and the breasts, they're moving. I think those are breasts. I don't know what those are actually. But every single muscle looks like it's moving independently. And only Watanabe animates it like this. <laughs> It's so creepy the way it's... It's like it's getting an epilepsy attack. And it, it looks so fucking disgusting. And down. And this very similar to Watanabe's Jujutsu Kaisen cut in episode 19. Very fast cuts. That's the way Watanabe does it. This is a pretty long cut though. Like Denji bounces on it. And then flips around. That's a pretty cool cut. I do think there needs to be another in-betweening here. In-betweening frame here. Or that is not a cut. So that needs a little bit more in-betweening. Like a frame between this and this. This. And this, there definitely needs to be a frame. So maybe that's something that will be fixed in the Blu-ray or maybe that's actually supposed to be a cut and uh, that was not conveyed to the rest of the teams because Watanabe does a lot of quick cuts, right? If this is a cut, then the background needs to change, but it didn't. That's why I'm thinking it's not a cut, but you can see what I'm talking about, right? There, 
it looks like there's a cut there, which there isn't. And then Denji just runs. Again, this looks a little bit awkward. The way he's running sideways here. This looks like a video game character when you press both W and A simultaneously. So he's like facing forwards, but moving like this. That's what this looks like. Like he's running with his body facing forward, but he's running sideways. That's a little bit awkward there, but I mean, that's just Watanabe's style. It's just me um, not enjoying this particular style of animation all that much. But I love Watanabe. I, it's one of my favorite animators. It's just when he goes full on with, I just noticed that Denji's smiling here. That's cool. But anyway, yeah, uh, when he, it's when, just when he goes on this full on, no weight, completely floaty type of animation that I just don't enjoy that much. The cut that comes after this is awesome though. Quick cuts as usual. Denji sliding here looks awesome. And here I think the background is CGI. Love the devil's motions again. And again, uh, Denji just absolutely does not mix with the background whatsoever. I think this is pretty good use of digital effects with the pink blood. And then Denji grabs the intestine. And it's not just between the foreground and the background that Watanabe likes to make it look separate. Like it does not like interaction between the foreground and the background. It's not just that. It's between any two bodies really. Because here you'll see that Denji is grabbing the intestine. And here it doesn't even look like he's grabbing the intestine with these last few frames. As you can see, that's not how someone would hold like a rope or something. But that's how he does it. It doesn't even look like he's grabbing it. But that's just how Watanabe likes to animate stuff, I guess. He just doesn't like any bit of interaction between two models. Here it looks like he's clutching tightly into it, so this is very cool. And here the foreground also mixes with the background very well, because again, this is fully hand-drawn background animation. The intestines here, that's part of the art direction, but all of this in the foreground, you can clearly tell the difference between this and this. What's really special about this, again, is the background animation. Watanabe is a master. He's a genius background animator. He did that with Space Dandy, still blows me away with how good that background animation looks. And he's doing this again here. Again, really cool cut there. And you see Denji just zooming past. Very good animation, very good 360 motion of um, the Leech Devil. Pulls on the intestine. And I love this. Its legs come together and the way it tumbles down, it's so well animated. Looks so natural. And again, this is what I was talking about where the digital effects kind of detract from the sequence. I don't like these digital effects being used here. Let me just see Watanabe's awesome effects animation, right? Why is the digital effects covering the 2D effects animation? That should never happen. If it's like towards the edges like these, that's fine, but it should never cover the 2D effects animation. That's where I don't like it. It doesn't not look very floaty here, by the way. I, it actually feels like Denji is sawing through that body. So that's really nice. And you also immediately see internal bleeding with the leech devil, blood coming from its mouth. And now we get to the final cut. I don't like this cut. But before that, let's talk about the digital effects used here. These digital effects look really nice. They mix really well with the background, mix very well with the Denji. And yeah, that's a, an example of digital effects looking kind of bad. And immediately after that, example of digital effects looking very good. Now to the cut that I don't like. The sense of weight and impact is just completely absent here. Especially the second hit, right? Okay, this hit looks like it hit, but this literally doesn't touch him. Look at that. It literally doesn't touch him at any point in time. And again, this just does not look like it's hitting him at all. But so that's again, Watanabe style. Some people will love it. Some people will hate it. I absolutely don't hate it because just from a technical point of view, Watanabe is one of the best animators around. He animates extremely complicated sequences. He makes an extremely high number of drawings for it. And yeah, that's already special animation. So if you don't like his style, that doesn't necessarily make this objectively bad animation because the whole idea of animation as a medium, as I said before, is to do stuff that won't be really possible in real life. To me, when he pushes it to the absolute limits and perfect, purposely makes it like there's absolutely no weight or sense of interaction between two bodies. I don't like it. Like his final sequence in Jujutsu Kaisen, Denji is sliding around the wall and then he slides upward. Watanabe literally reverses gravity so that Denji slides upwards, which makes no sense. But here, that doesn't occur. Most of the cuts are amazing, just peak Watanabe, except this last cut, which just looks a little bit awkward to me. This is absolutely not the fault of the compositing team or the art direction team, by the way. I always complained about that. 
with Watanabe because in Jujutsu Kaisen, the bad compositing did compound Watanabe's interaction with the background, like his Nanami running sequence. But here, that's clearly not the case. It's not a matter of compositing catching up to the animation because Yen Yen's cut was just as chaotic, if not even more chaotic, with Denji being thrown through a building, which is part of the art direction. But the compositing kept up there. So it's not about the compositing not keeping up. This is just Watanabe's style. And now we get to Isuta Meister's cut. Isuta was the main animator, main Sakuga animator in Black Clover, where some of his cuts looked absolutely incredible, while others looked bad. But that's because, again, Black Clover's production schedule was so fucked that even the best fucking animators sometimes animated scenes that looked kind of bad. But here, Isuta is on top form. This is Isuta's best work, probably. Again, for some fucking reason, throughout this episode, it's not the action in the action sequence I found to be the best thing about it. It's the character acting. First with Keisura Watanabe and now with Isuta Meister's character acting. This just looks so fucking sick. This is also very good use of slow motion. Again, like they did previously, this is slow motion. When Denji clutches his fist, not only is the motion completely changing, the speed is also changing. It's going from slow motion to regular motion. So that just gives that extra bit of oom. Denji making his entire body rigid looks so good. And the next cut also just as good. First of all, these smears look really sick. Again, I love this character acting bit, and I also love this character acting bit. And uh, boom! Power is dead. Like if you look at the previous cut here, Power was right next to Denji. And then boom. Let's not talk about that though. So Power is, I'm sure Power is fine. What I really like about this cut though is how everything moves because of the shock. So the arm comes down, or the tentacle comes down, and boom, smoke animation. The platform that Denji's on lifts up and the pole is also moving. Pole also lifts up and then goes down. Everything moves up sequentially and everything goes down sequentially. It's like a it's like an earthquake shockwave and that looks really cool. Yeah, really enjoy that. Some fantastic background animation here too. Again, Denji's expressions here, not even very noticeable, but still the way he's running with his tongue out. That's just so chainsaw man to me. Really cool smoke animation, multi-layered smoke animation. Yeah, there are a lot of layers, many layers to that smoke animation. And that is where his cut ends. And now it's Jem's cut. Jem is so incredible. Another young animator and also a Utapon inspired animator. I mean, just look at this sequence. You can see Utapon's inspiration here all over the place. Not just the smears, not just the animation timing, but also the camera work that I was talking about. And Jem does an incredible job here. He's not animating a super fast sequence. I love the first person shot here, sick background animation, and then grabs the hair and boom, gets in there. Again, Utapon style, spiky smears, blood effects here, the digital effects absolutely mix perfectly well with the 2D blood, as you can see there. I think that's really awesome that they made it mix so well. Like there's, you can barely notice the uh, digital effects there. They are there, like this strand and this strand, that's digital effects. And it just increases the quantity of blood, which is why they're using it in the first place. Another extremely well storyboarded sequence. I thought this was absolutely fucking incredible and extremely unique way of doing it. But then I saw the manga. Tatsuki Fujimoto, if he was an animator, he would be one of the best at storyboarding sequences. Just, just from what I've read so far, I've read up until the anime's current point, which is what I do. I re watch the anime and then I read that content in the manga. And usually I feel underwhelmed when I do that, because the anime is usually, you know, more dynamic, there's more stuff happening there. But even with Chainsaw Man being literal perfection, being one of the best anime, best produced anime ever created, Fujimoto still surprises me with the way he panels his shot. Like this one, for example, this is a direct one-to-one, -one, the way they're doing this. It's like perfectly envisioning the idea of Fujimoto, what Fujimoto did for the manga. Perfectly, as you can see here, this is where the thing is gonna bite. Exactly here, even the tongue, this is like gonna slice up the tongue a bit, and that does happen uh, when Khan comes in, Khan slices the tongue up a bit. This portion is going to get torn apart. Again, the perspective shift here is awesome. You just think, oh, this is just another shot. And then Aki's hand just slowly moves in and does this. Love it so much. The focus shift is awesome. Really cool animation here. And the reflection, again, I keep pointing that out. Reflections are so beautiful in Chainsaw Man and they're also always individually animated here too. It is individually animated. They can't just ask a computer this is separately animated by Jem, and just the perspective is just, the idea of perspective is just so on point.
because this is exactly what his reflection would look like from the back. And if that was already impressive to you, check this out. You see his hair moving, right? And the hair is also moving in the reflection and it's perfectly matching the movements of the hair in the actual foreground model as well. Fuck, that's so sick. The sa timing is so satisfying too. The shift to slow motion after it chomps on the leech devil is just so perfect. Again, a lot of digital blood here, but also a lot of like meaty blood animation by Jim himself. Like all of this, it is Jim's animation, I'm very sure. Big hole in Denji's chest or stomach, and that gets healed up later on. We don't get to see it heal up, but yeah. Again, the attention to detail is amazing. Like with the, the way the leech devil is saying, what? Uh, I... And it's saying that way because there are no lungs. Lungs are part of its body. So a cut off head can't speak normally because you need air to travel through the lungs. So whenever you see a cut off, chopped off head in anime and it speaks properly, that is bullshit. That is not physically possible. And Chainsaw Man of all things does it well. Again, really awesome blood animation here. This is by Hayato Kurosaki, I think already, the Fox Devil. It's got to be very strong because it's got multiple renegons on it. Such a high level of detail and smoke animation. Hayato Kurosaki definitely has a fetish for smoke animation. The shot itself, the way it's storyboarded is amazing. The model of the Leech Devil and the Fox Devil head drawn perfectly. And the art direction really complements it as well. Yeah, Hayato Kurosaki definitely has a fetish for smoke animation. In the previous episode, episode 3, we saw a lot of multi-layered smoke animation by him and here again he does just some awesome smoke animation and i love this way the smoke dissipates around power here and here tiny detail here um the way aki is clutching his hand and he has a little bit of pained expression on his face because a piece of his skin is now gone the fox devil took it and as aki is looking to the side kobeni also moves in the background unnecessary amount of movement like who would care if kobeni did not move here I don't think anyone would care if Kobeni did not move here, but she does. Again, the blood gushing animation looks really sick. Kobeni's cute C character acting done super perfectly. And as she looks at Aki, she starts blushing. Nice. We never see a lot of blushies. We don't, we don't see a lot of sweat droplets either in the anime of Chainsaw Man, but in the manga, it's used extensively. But with Kobeni, they're going all out with like the cartoonish character acting, which I really enjoy. It's also like similar to what Spy X Family is doing. With most characters, there's no cartoonish character acting, but with Anya, Anya has such a wide range of expressions that it's really fun to see that. And I hope Chainsaw Man does the same thing. Chainsaw Man keeps that realism aspect for most characters, but with Kobeni, they go all out. And I've already watched episode five, so I know that's what they're doing. Like episode five has a ton of beautiful Kobeni character acting sequences. And again, when Himeno is saying, Yush, she's not just saying, Yush, she's saying, Yush. She speaks with her entire body. No compromises when it comes to animation. And the hole is already healed up. I wonder why they didn't show it healing up. I would have liked to see that actually forming his meat around his body because his arm has not healed up yet, right? But a giant hole in his body did. Again, the smoke animation still doesn't end. The way it's slowly dissipating it looks so sick. Again, this cut, if I had to break down the entire sequence, it would take too much time. The first of all, the shots are incredible. The character acting is incredible. If I had to break down one cut, it would be this. The motions look so good, but it's not just the motion. It's also the shading here that looks particularly incredible. Yeah, that looks so sick. The way the shadows split up. Just ha doing one drawing, just making a single drawing of a hand is already hard enough. And yeah, the bunny apples, really nice. Aki does not have to do this, obviously, but he does it because He's a nice guy and I really li like that. Really cool smears here. Yeah, nice. I love smears, especially when used for cuts that are not even very important, like this one and the cut where the girl is arranging her books in the previous episode and another cut in this episode later on. Yeah, I love it when you see high quality smears in cuts that are, well, not supposed to be part of action animation. Again, the slight camera movement here done really well. Really enjoyable storyboarding here. For no reason, they did this. Like they could have directly gone from this to this, but they have to go to the apples first and then the plate gets transformed into like his memories. And it's done like that because this, it directly contributes to why Aki is being so nice to Denji. It's because of this. It's because he saw and he met all these people and talked to all those people 
who Denji helped. That is why the, there's the focus on the apple first, because Aki is doing that for Denji, because Denji did that for these people. Again, look at these complex shifts and angles. A really well shot scene, and boom, another extremely well shot scene. It's not easy to do this. It's not just a perspective shift that they have to animate, but the art director has to make a completely different background. It's, it is beyond incredible what they're doing for the show. And we get to this cut. There's a really good looking walk cycle here, and there's a CGI background here as well. Two reflections here. One is Aki on the ground, as you can see here, that is Aki's reflection. And Aki on his side, this window here, you can see this tiny reflection moving forward. This is the actual size of the shot. So it's very, very small, barely noticeable, but they still made two individual reflections of Aki just walking forward. And then we switch to a CGI background. I'm not even sure if this is a CGI background because of how well it switches from a 2D hand painted background to a CGI background. It just looks one to one. Look at that. Look at those smears. Some really sick looking smears. These look like Koki Fujimoto-esque smears a bit. And not really. It doesn't stop there. Reflections keep happening. Must be so hard to match the two animations here of the same character and then composite it in a way that it looks like a reflection. Look at this background artwork. Holy fuck, this looks sick. Imagine having to paint something like this. This is beyond incredible. Fuck. Again, really well laid out shots here. Like it's not just one guy talks and then you see the other person's expression to that information. Like here, Aki speaking, we can see that. And we also get to see Makima's reaction to that while Aki speaking. She's holding it and then she shifts the position. She does this and then she does this. Why would you animate that? Again, no reason. Yeah, most people wouldn't storyboard that, let alone animate that. Another really well storyboarded shot. A reflection of Aki, a reflection of Makima's chair. Again, a very well drawn image of Makima as well. There's no wonder that they used this face in the trailer because it really is super well drawn. And again, they make Makima look so fucking threatening. Look at this face. I'm very scared, but also very aroused. Another really cool shot with amazing art direction. Now we get to Aki's morning routine. They're literally coming up with new genres of animation to just add Sakuga to it. Now we got morning routine animation, Aki with this YouTuber morning routine. Again, this is just way too natural to even be considered. He first takes out the curtains and then he undoes the lock, but to undo the lock, he has to move this curtain first. So he does move that curtain. You see that curtain moving, then he undoes the lock and then he opens the door. It's too natural. I don't even want to, I don't even feel like breaking this down because I think I might cry. But there is, there are a couple of shots that I have to talk about, like this one. Look at that. So well storyboarded. Love this first person shot. Here you already start seeing Aki's silhouette as part of the reflection. And you see it become more and more clear. Toothbrush Sakuga. I, I didn't know I wanted it until I saw it. Also the detail on the toothbrush is incredible. This is a hand-drawn toothbrush. For those wondering, this is not a CGI toothbrush. Again, the coffee Sakuga is sick the coffee powder going into the cup and the way it, it's bubbling as he's pouring the hot water. So amazing, man. I mean, this looks so fluid that I wouldn't be surprised if there was a CGI base for this. The movements here actually look like they have a CGI base, but I, I could, I'm not sure. Another shot from the trailer looks super sick. He's just looking at inside because he sees Denji walking in. And I mean, yeah, look at the fucking detail on his clothing. And actually nothing special by Chainsaw Man standards. <laughs> I have to point that out because yeah, this looks incredible. And I remember talking about this shot in particular in the trailer to say that the clothing animation looks sick. But now that I've actually seen the show, this is just okay by the show standards. Again, a really goofy piece of animation. The animation is done really fluidly, but what's actually happening is goofy. It just stands up straight like that. Like, that does not happen. I, I should know I used to have long hair. Again, we go through his entire morning routine to show that how well balanced he is with everything that he does. And Denji is just enjoying his meal again, the same meal. I also love how well mannered he is now. Like the first time he ate it, he poured jam all over the table. Now there's barely anything anywhere, no stains anywhere. The way the onion gets stuck to the knife and then he brings it down and then another piece of it gets stuck. 
and then they both fall down. So naturally done. Oh man, this is incredible. And then power comes in and then destroys everything. Love the cat animation here again. Again, really cool shots here. Also enjoy this, love this animation. Like the way Aki is saying, what is he saying? Is there a reason why you're sending me all these cycles? I mean, he emphasizes on the you. Look at this. He looks at them and then does that. He does this. That's because he, when you're referring to someone, you do that, right? And that's what Aki is doing here, referring to these guys. So he does this. That doesn't necessarily mean anything because Makima can't see him do that because he's talking to her over the phone. But he does that because it's something that human beings naturally do. And it reminds me of like a sequence in Arcane. There's a scene where Echo licks his lips. And um, when I saw that, I was just like, why would they animate that? Why would they animate a character doing this? Because it's something that people naturally do. And now look at this expression. And look how she's twitching her eye there. Remember that. And then she grabs the vegetables and then just fucking flings it. This sequence was animated by Kovei Lin. Kovei Lin has only animated food so far. Like he animated the first Denji's dream food scene in the first PV, the pre-animated PV. Then he animated that again in the show. And now he's animating this. So I don't know if they're memeing and only giving food scenes to Kovei Lin. Or if Kovei Lin just loves food animation so much that he wants to do it. Just like how Kazunori Ozawa is passionate about animating Megumin's explosions. Look at this shot. This would only, this is like action animation shot. And of course, as he grabs, then she grabs it. There's a little bit of extra sauce on the carrot, right? And that sauce drips through his knuckle gaps. Look at that. And again, there's still a little bit of extra sauce left, curry left on the carrot. So as he moves the carrot, because of the inertia, there's a little bit of the curry that flows out with it, as you can see. And this again, I was surprised when I first saw it that this scene only has mouth flaps, but they were actually doing what Fujimoto does in the manga. Fujimoto does a lot of repeated paneling. That's what the anime is doing here, adapting it one to one. In the first situation, neither of them are moving, just the mouth flaps, which is how character acting is done in most anime. But then we get the same shot, but now fully animated. And now look at Aki's face. At the start of this, we had this. And now power is chilling. But Aki got turned into that. Compare this face of Aki to the, his face in the manga. This is actually more comical than his face in the manga. Again, just Chainsaw Man things. A guy trying to unclog the toilet by scrubbing off the shit in it, which was shat out by this girl. But then that girl just offers him to grab her tits. And then she walks in on the, into the bathroom. I guess that's just a normal scenario that you should just expect from Chainsaw Man. I wonder how the kiss scene is going to go. Like I know uh, Himeno, I think her name is. Let me check. Yes, it is Himeno. So I wonder how Denji's kiss with Himeno is going to go. Uh, maybe something absurd is going to happen there as well. But yeah, I also like how Fujimoto is doing this. Like usually a cute character is like cute in every form, every way and form. Like there's everything about them is nice. But with power, the only thing about her cuteness is her physical appearance. Everything else about her. Like she probably stinks. She probably smells absolutely fucking disgusting. She has the smell of an ugly bastard, probably. Her breath stinks. Her body odor is foul. Fujimoto is weird. And the weirdness is being conveyed perfectly by the anime. Maybe that's because I'm an anime only that I think that. Again, this is so fully animated. So animated. Like her finger always moving. Her expressions keep changing. As she recalls why she's giving those chances, her blushes get thicker because she's getting happier at the end of the episode. Not over yet, of course, there's also the ED. They perfectly encapsulate Power's personality in three cuts. First is her being loud and obnoxious, and then her being upside down, loud and obnoxious because of how loud and obnoxious she is. And then that loud and obnoxious face turns into this. And that is power. That's who power is. And if anyone wants to know what power is like, all they need to do is watch these first few seconds of the ED and they'll know everything about their, her personality. The whole ED sequence is animated by Cole Owl, who's a web animator, the truest form of web animator. And he's allowed to keep his style entirely intact for his ED, which Chainsaw Man is doing for every single ED. Full creative control to the animators slash solo animator working on it like episode 2 ED and now this ED is a solo animator 
working on the entire thing and really good with rotoscoping like he's pretty much mastered he slash she i don't know extremely good at the way they are they use rotoscoping i think this is a bit too small here i wish this was bigger and i love the how the framing changes each time and when we finally have like a normal framing and then power just breaks through that and yeah this shot again quite possibly very possibly rotoscoped so i wonder if kola is a woman and she's doing the rotoscopy on herself that would make it like fucking 500 iq again a really cool sequence the way she's doing the face is just really cute her blood forms a tomato red in colors and then just fucking throws it vegetables she hates vegetables fuck these vegetables fuck them so fucking goofy i love it and these sweat droplets are what i'm talking about this is the kind of sweat droplets you, you see a lot in the manga but in the anime it's usually just removed i love how makima is not playing along with this bullshit she's just and wow look at how well drawn this cat is that honestly has more detail than like Hironori Tanaka's animation. Again, some really good rotoscoping. I haven't seen rotoscoping looking this natural since Jujutsu Kaisen's AD. And honestly, the rotoscoping component of the animation looks better here. I also love that there's no AD work here to change, to make corrections here. Like this frame, this drawing is something that would get corrected if there was an actual AD working here. Drawings like this would definitely be corrected. Like this is probably what she lose, they use for the layout, but was not corrected. Because no one needs to work on this except call out. And she has full creative freedom to do whatever the fuck she wants to do with this ED. Always love it when um, animators get full creative freedom like this. Like going from really good amount of detail to fucking cartoon sketch to again, good detail. I love it. And then back to this. <laughs> Look at these faces too. And then she comes back in on Aki and hugs them. Fantastic ED. My favorite ED still, obviously, um, episode 3 ED. I don't think that anything's going to change that. Because Maxim the Hormone is one of my favorite artists. And add to that the awesome visuals that we got in episode 3. I still think episode 3 ED is the best one. I mean, there are EDs more. More EDs around, right? There's Aimer ED. There's TK from Link Toyster ED. There's a lot of good stuff coming up. I don't know what kind of AD Amor is going to make because her usual sad kind of tone does not work for Chainsaw Man. But yeah, maybe there's probably some sad sequences in Chainsaw Man and she's going to make the ED for that episode. But hopefully there's nothing like that sad in Chainsaw Man. Hopefully it just she stays lighthearted like this. I don't want to see any of the main cast die. Like I don't, I don't want anything happening to Kobeni or Power. Or even Denji and Aki, right? But the bait setup, it looks like Himeno and Aki are gonna die. But yeah, fantastic episode by Yoshihara. This year's best, honestly. And it's also pretty much confirmed that the last episode will be Ryu Nakayama again. And the reason I'm saying that is it's usually how it happens. Like the chief director will work throughout the show for sure. Like Ryu Nakayama is also definitely working his ass off on all of these episodes, even though he's not credited as the episode director. But as episode director, they usually work on the first and last episodes like Shingo Natsume did for One Punch Man. He storyboarded the first episode and the last episode. Fantastic fucking episode. This will take me a long time to edit. So expect this to come out by next week, maybe. <laughs> and yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy it, please leave a like. And if you think your friends will enjoy it as well, please share it to them. If you did not like it, leave a dislike and tell me down in the comment section on what I can improve. If you want to see more of this stuff, subscribe. And yeah, that's about it. Thanks for the views.